Hello friends, welcome to all of board. I hope you are all doing well and your exam preparations are going good too. This video is a series of video that we have created for you to cover your computer awareness. This is part 3 of the series. In this video we will be talking about computer peripherals that is the various other devices like keyboards, mouse etc that we use along with the computers. We will also talk about computer languages. So we will talk about the low level language and the high level language. We will also discuss their types and the operating system. Here we will discuss the characteristics and the types of operating system. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest videos. For those of you who are preparing for IBPS PO examination, Olive Board has got for you target IBPS PO 2018. Now, this is a free live online course wherein we will be conducting free live classes for all the topics in the syllabus for this examination. We will also have live practice sessions wherein we will be providing you questions and you can solve them in a competitive manner with your fellow mates. We will also have live doubt clearing sessions. So all the doubts that you have with respect to a particular topic, you can reach out to our experts on their email IDs and they will help you solve those, those doubts. Along with this, we will be providing you free concept videos to enhance your learning. Please note that this course is provided to you free of cost. So to join the course, uh, you can click on the link that is provided in the description box. Let's start with the computer peripherals first. So we will talk about input devices. What are input devices? They are devices that serve as a link between the user and the computer. So something which acts as a link between us when we are using a computer and the computer itself. So they translate the information into a form that is understandable by the computer. Now we as humans can understand a particular language. It can be English. English, Hindi or any other language for that matter. So, uh, but the computer, computer cannot understand these languages, right? So we need a device which acts as a link between us where we tell what we want and it gets converted into a language that the computer understands. So some input devices are first is the keyboard. So now keyboard uh, helps us in inputting the data to the computer in both alpha and numeric forms. So we know all the alphabets are present in the keyboard and also the numbers from 1 to 9, 0 to 9 are available in the keyboard. So some of the important keys in the keyboard are first are toggle keys. Now what these toggle keys do is that the input from a group of keys on a keyboard between two different input modes. So for example caps lock or number lock or scroll lock. So when we put this the function of a particular key changes right so when we are using caps lock we make sure that the letters that we will be typing now will be in caps mode right the second type of uh, keys on the keyboard are insert modifier keys. So these are special keys that temporarily modifies the normal action of another key when pressed together. So when we press shift or alt or control or function with another number, we can change the function of that particular key with the help of these keys. Hence they are called insert modifier keys. The third one is the function key. So it is a key on the computer keyboard distinct from the main alphanumeric keys to which software can assign a function. So to all the uh, F or function keys ranging from 1 to 12 we have a function assigned. So here we can increase the brightness or decrease the brightness, increase the volume or reduce the volume. So different functions are assigned to these keys. Next is mouse. So it is a pointing and con cursor control device. So there is a round ball at its base that senses the movement of the mouse and sends corresponding signals to the CPU when the mouse buttons are pressed. So we know that when we are using a mouse, there is a ball which is at the base of the mouse that, uh, of the mouse that helps in sending signals or messages to the CPU of the computer. That's how we use a mouse by clicking 
the various things that we want to next is a joystick so to move the cursor position on a monitor uh, screen it is mainly used in computer aided designing and playing computer games so we do not use it regularly on all the computers but whenever we have to move a certain thing on the screen of the monitor that's when we use joystick next is light pen so this is used to select a displaced menu item or displayed menu item or draw pictures on monitor screen so we know a light pen is uh, used to select a certain uh, when we are highlighting something or copying something that's when we are using light pen next is trackball so this is basically used in either notebooks or laptops this is the ball in which uh, which is half inserted and by moving fingers on the ball pointer can be moved so we know it's like a device on which we can move our fingers and things get typed on the screen next is the scanner so by using scanner we can print material and also convert a file format that can be used in a pc so the documents that we have and we want to uh, scan it to convert it into a digital form that's when we use scanner next are output devices so the output devices translate the computer's output into a form that is understandable by the user so like input devices helps the computer understand what we want from the computer the output devices helps us understand the result that we have for our query given by the computer so one of the output devices is monitor which is also called visual display unit this is the main output device of a computer it forms images from very tiny dots that are called pixels which are arranged in a rectangular form the sharpness of the image depends on the number of pixels so the smaller the pixels and the more number of pixels gives us a better quality right so there are two types of viewing screens that are used for monitors the first one is cathode ray tube here the display is made up of small picture elements called pixels so the smaller the pixels the better is the image clarity or resolution of the picture the second one is flat panel display so it refers to a class of video devices that have reduced volume weight and power requirement in comparison to cathode ray tube so uh, tube so flat panel display is in a manner better than the cathode ray tube next output device is a printer so it is used to print information on paper we know right when we get some pdfs and we want to print those we use the printer to get a soft copy converted into a hard copy there are two types of printers first is impact printer and second is non impact printer so the impact printer prints the characters by striking them on the ribbon which is then pressed on the paper so there is an internal function through which it works whereas in non impact printers the characters are printed without using the ribbon so these printers print a complete page at a time so they are called page printers also so all these laser printers or inkjet printers etc or basically all the printers that we use nowadays are all non impact printers now we'll talk about computer languages so there are two major types of programming languages which is low level languages and high level languages so low language uh, low level languages are machine oriented languages and require an extensive knowledge of computer hardware and its configuration and it is further divided into machine language and assembly language so it requires a lot of knowledge with respect to how do we use them right so first we talk about machine language it is directly understood by the computer as it is written in the strings of zeros and ones as we know that the computer understand only zero and one so when we talk about machine language every characteristic is written in the form of either zero or one it does not need a translator program it is called the machine code now for example the program instruction may look like this number it is efficient 
but it is very difficult to learn now we cannot remember all the numbers for all the letters that we want to use right or uh, the words that we want to use in the computer we cannot remember all zeros and ones so uh, one of the advantage of this machine language is uh, programs run fast because there's no translation program that is required but the disadvantages are difficult to program since we cannot remember and debugging is also an issue in this the second type of uh, language is assembly language so it uses a combination of letters and numbers to code unlike uh, zero and one it uses other words also and other numbers also so this set of symbols and letters form the assembly language and a translator program is required to translate to the machine language so all these numbers that we feed into the system gets uh, translated into one and zero which is understood or understandable by the computer so this translator program is called assembler what are the advantages of assembly language it is easier to understand and minimizes our effort because we don't have to remember so many things and similar efficiency of execution as machine language level languages because we've got translators the disadvantage is it is machine dependent now we know right that we need a translator to convert assembly language into a uh, uh, primary language or uh, machine language so hence this is a dis disadvantage of this the next type of computer language is high level language so here only the instruction in english words and logic of problem irrespective of the type of con uh, computer should be known so high level languages are simple languages that use either english or mathematical symbols like plus minus percentages or division for its program construction so these are problem oriented languages because instructions are suitable for solving a problem only so whenever we have a problem these help us to solve this problem so for example cobol which is common business oriented language is mostly suitable for business oriented language where there is very little processing and huge output so anything that has to do with the business and there's a problem we use this cobol the other is uh, fortin which is for formula trans uh, translation and basic so these are used for large processing requirements because they need a lot of process to be done so now we have language assemblers that are used to transfer assembly level language to machine level language right so uh, we use this assembler to convert assembly language into machine language the next is cache memory which converts all high level language program into machine language by converting and executing it line by line so we know that to convert high level language which needs a lot of processing into the machine language which is understandable by the computer we use cache memory the third is compiler which uses the high level uh, language program uh which converts this into machine language on one go and reports all the errors of the programs along with li uh, line numbers so compiler is better when we compare it with cache memory because in cache memory we convert it line by line but i'm using compiler we can do it at one go only now we have operating systems so an operating system acts as an interface between a user and a computer so there is some operating system that is installed in the computer that helps us interact with the computer right so it is a software which manages the hardware of the computer so anything that needs a uh, processing is done by the operating system only so there are three objectives of an operating system which is first convenience so it should be convenient for the user to use the computer and the operating system makes it possible efficiency so we have to make sure that there's very less or minimal or no error which is ensured by the operating system and the ability to evolve with time and technology now we know the technology is improving every single day we have some new thing that is coming up so if we use a operating system that was created 100 year ago or 200 years ago it will not be possible right so it has to evolve over time 
the characteristic of operating systems are first memory management so it tracks the uh, primary and allocates the memory when a process requests so it keeps the management of the memory so it stores the primary data the processor management so it allocates and deallocates the processor which is cpu to the process so whenever it know, uh, gets to know that there is something which needs to be done by the cpu it makes sure that the information is provided to the cpu to conduct the instruction given by the user next is device management so it keeps track of all the devices it is called input output controller and decides which process gets the device when and for how long so when we re require a printer it makes sure that it manages that this is the activity which needs to be performed by the printer or the scanner or any other device for that matter then file management so it allocates and deallocates the resources through file management whenever we go and we search for a particular file it is it can be done only by using the operating system security so it prevents unauthorized access to programs and data by means of password so we know to log into our uh, id or to log into our computer or to switch on the computer we have passwords set up this is to ensure security which is also managed by the operating system job accounting so it keeps track of time and resources sources that are used by various users control system performance so it records delays between request for a service from the system and interaction between operators also so all this is controlled by the operating system error detecting aids so production of dumps traces error messages and other debugging and other error detecting methods are all taken care of by the operating system coordination between uh, other software and users so it coordinates and assigns compilers interpreters and other software to various users of the computer system now we will discuss the types of operating system so first is batch operating system the users of batch operating system do not interact with the computer directly each user prepares his job on an offline device like punch cards and submit it to the computer operator so here in batches all that we want is done offline and then the operating system carries on the activity the second is time sharing or multitasking so this is a technique which enables many people located at various terminals to use a computer system at the same time time sharing or multitasking is a logical extension of multi programming so we know right when we open our web browser we can open our uh, facebook or instagram or youtube all at a same time so this is nothing but multi programming in the same manner if i am sitting in a particular city and someone who also can access the system and is sitting in some other city or office can go and access the same computer from different places so this is nothing but time sharing or multitasking the third is single user operating system so this is an operating system that is developed and intended for use on a computer or similar machine that will have only a single user at a given time so when i am a particular person who is assigned a particular computer so i will only be able to use that operating system and no one else next is multi user operating system so this is an operating system that allows multiple users on different computers to access a single system with one operating system only and the last one is real time operating system so it is defined as a data processing system in which the time interval required to process and respond to inputs is so so small that it controls the environment it is always online whereas online systems need not be real time so this provides solution very soon so it is always in an online mode but it is not necessary that it uh, all that is online is real time operating system that's all we have for you in this video i hope you like the video please do share it with your friends and keep them updated too and if you've not subscribed to our youtube channel yet please go ahead and subscribe now to stay tuned with all the videos that we get for you all the very best for your examination
थैंक यू